I'm just a lonesome traveler, the great historical bum, highly educated from history. For people to meet in physical space, some of which have only had Zoom meetings, is brilliant in itself. And then also, people have been doing a lot of learning. There's a lot, uh, whole kind of layers of learning going on individually and then as a team. I've come on board as a sound artist and a community musician. Really, I'm hoping to explore kind of the ideas around Bedford's relationship with uh, the airship industry through kind of soundscapes and community-based compositions. We're workshopping at the moment and we're just kind of getting palettes really towards the final project and some of it is quite spooky and dark and ominous and in a sense that's kind of aesthetically what I'm interested in as well. So those kind of collisions between something that's kind of shiny and beautiful and new and something that's kind of dystopian. So I think it's, it's got both of those elements. I'm collaborating with the team on the audiovisual side of the project and the sculptural ideas for the, the show in, in Higgins with a view to creating a tourable immersive performance. One of the problems about communication is that you think you're communicating but other people don't understand what you're talking about. In a way, to bring those different perceptions together, different visualisations within different platforms, mediums, even down to the, the back of the fag packet sketch as to how the room might look. And everyone's been doing elements of this in isolation, working in a WhatsApp group, swapping a group email together, occasional Zoom, Obviously for Sam and Rob it's the first time we've been to Bedford, so getting a sense of what it's like, what Bedford's about, in a way locates the ideas in this place. I had a couple of practices with a very small choir um, to get that going. In the end we, we couldn't have face-to-face -face rehearsals so I've been gathering videos in and I'm going to be using those in, in different ways. Um, I'm hoping to uh, just add them all together and generate a piece of work around that. One thing we've done is we've constructed a video using some of the archive i have also done some writing, so there's now this text. So we've got these different recordings of people speaking the text. So that's in a sense kind of determining or synthesizing what we're trying to say. The way that it's turned out is that that material actually really informs sort of the drift and the CGI generated content with the Unreal Engine. It's the first time that we've actually seen content working in the Unreal Engine. To actually see how that operates with the 4K media player is really interesting. We work in a very live way, so we're actually capturing as we move around these spaces. And as an audiovisual artist, I think that there's a really nice relationship with making decisions in the moment you're in, reacting to the, audio, to the sound and the audio that we're generating. So it becomes, you know, live, there's, there's mistakes in there, and there's moments that really work. The process by which people go to, to in, invent and think beyond what they can already imagine is also part of the artistic process. So art, technology, science all rely on something like some sort of internal creativity, which then gets multiplied when you put a whole load of people together in the same space. Well, I better quit my talking cause I told you all I know. Please remember, partner, wherever you may go, the world is digging Hitler's grave, and when the job is done, that'll be the biggest thing that man has ever done. Yes, that'll be the biggest thing that man has ever done.